And my name is Masih Haras, and I am with two institutions, uh, Tentera, so uh, Center for Terahertz Research and Applications, this is Polish Academy of Sciences, and the uh, Center for Advanced Materials and Technology, this is with Warsaw University of Technology. And I'm here together with you to give you a presentation that is a little bit different in, 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 in a field than the, the previous one. I will scope on, um, I will focus on attention on energy harvesting and uh, the IoT. And uh, so this presentation is about, I will try to switch, no, I cannot. Okay, okay. So this presentation is about energy, so the heart and the central part of our social life. And we need a lot of energy to power our households and to power our industries. And um, I hope at the end of this presentation, you will have more information about what is waste energy conversion, how we can do it, what for we should do it, and which materials should be used. Well, as you know, each energy the conversion is loaded with losses. We cannot, we cannot convert energy or produce new one without losing part of this energy. And the concept of waste energy is to reuse those losses to something useful. And uh, this is wisely, uh, this is wise concept to use waste energy. And uh, this will definitely improve our medical health. It will save a lot of our money as you will about to see, but most of all, this will save our planet. And in order to give you the synthetic review of energy harvesting and uh, in order to give you this presentation in readable and easy to understand way, I have divided my talk into five parts. Uh, the first part, what a, fun, what a wonderful word, will, will give you a slight uh, perspective on the world situation on energy and the environment. Then I will focus our attention on the energy wastes and the possible sources we can use to, to recover those losses. The third part will be dedicated to energy harvesting, so I will try to explain the conventional physics and the, the conventional methods of energy harvesting. And then at the end, I will link the IoT with the energy harvesting. So let's start with the very first, very first part, what a wonderful world. So here you can see the growth of uh, human population, historical growth of human population. We are close to 8 billion, according to United Nations, and such a huge amount of people is consuming huge amount of energy, as you can see on this plot. Here you can see historical plot of primary energy. This is this line here. So each year humanity consumes in average 2.5% more energy than previous year. So we are consuming huge amount of energy. This trend is still continually rising, but most of the energy which is produced in the world comes from fossil fuels like coal, oil, or natural gas. And here you can see the prediction uh, of reserves in, in fossil fuels that to, until 200, uh, 2100, it will be very expensive and very difficult to extract fossil fuels to, gain, to, to sell them, that they will be really too deep. So regarding the, the situation in link with situation that we are producing most of the energy from fossil fuels, there is also a negative impact on our environment. And here you can see historical evolution of uh, uh, carbon dioxide concentration. And um, this is this black line. You can see that this is growing those recent years and the earth atmosphere temperature uh, also grows. So I don't know if it is related to the human activity or it is related to the um, solar cycles, but definitely it has negative impact on our quality of life. Well, we have such a particularity to live in the, in the age of semiconductors, and uh, I'm sure each one of you has a, at least smartphone and one PC. Well, you can see here on this plot the historical evolution of cells of computers and smartphones. So blue line is for computers and red line is for smartphones. 
uh, you can see that this industry this is a huge market that sells hundred millions of units and only we are talking about two devices, two type of devices. Second of all, that you can see here starting from 2010 that PCs are being replaced by smartphones. And uh, the third thing which was very interesting for me is that you can see those peaks here in the smartphones cells and this corresponds to Christmas gifts. So each one, maybe perhaps one of you received a, a smartphone under for, for a Christmas gift and this is this peak actually. Well, semiconductor industry is very particular environment and um, here you can see how huge progress was made since 1970 till today. Uh, on this axis, you can see MOSFET gate length, which can be translated to the size of transistor, and this corresponds to this red line. So you can see that we are able to fabricate transistors smaller and smaller. This is called miniaturization trend, uh, but more um, advanced term is Murlow. So Murlow was driving the semiconductor industry for four decades. So we are able to produce smaller and smaller transistors. And uh, owing to the miniaturization, we are able to put more and more transistors per processor. And this is this blue line. So we are able to perform smaller device to, to fabricate smaller devices, and we are able to pack them more in a single device. But moreover, with miniaturization trend, there is also a, another feature that uh, with miniaturization, we our transistors or devices are consuming less and less energy. So you can hear, you can see here power consumption per million of operations for transistor. And uh, you can see that historically this trend is decreasing. So, so transistor devices are less and less energy. They are consuming less and less energy. And this miniaturization together with performance boost regarding the, regarding the power consumption fits perfectly with energy harvesting, as you will about to see. Well, there is another particularity in the, within, the, um, within the semiconductor industry, which is mar new market, new branch of semiconductor industry that appeared. It is called IoT or Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is the all devices that are communicating between each other, omitting human intervention. So, there is no human involved in the communication between devices. Historically, this, uh, this branch of, uh, of industry comes from the concept of intelligent building. You can see here the, the, the figure presenting that. So the, this concept is about that the building will control the operation of, it, of himself. So there are a lot of sensors distributed along the building that provides the information about temperature, presence in the room, uh, I don't know, lights, uh, switch off or switch on, and they are providing those informations to the controlling unit and controlling unit, it takes decision and takes control over the building. So it switch off the light or it switch off the heating, et cetera, et cetera. So this, such a system like IoT requires a lot of sensors to gather the informations uh, over the system. But those sensors are operated in very particular way. Here you can see the power, uh, the power consumption in a given in, in the exemplary, uh, in, in an exemplary in a sensor for IoT. And so the, the sensor is working in the cycles. For majority of time, it is switched off because we don't need to measure continually the temperature in the room. We can measure it once per 15 minutes, for example. So. Generally, the, the sensor is switched off. When there is a command, hey, sensor, measure temperature in the room, it, switched, it, 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 it switches on, it measures the temperature, then it codes the temperature, decodes the information, and it, it performs the transmission to the controlling unit. And you can see this peak, power of peak related to the transmissions for the communication, and then he, it turns off or go to sleep and then this cycle repeats and repeats. So one cycle consumes a very small amount of energy. 
less than 100 microjoules. So this is very small energy that that is needed to get um, a sensor operational. Here you can see how popular is IoT. So here is the historical evolution of uh, devices which are connected to IoT. We are observing huge increase of devices uh, of IoT devices since 2003 and now the, the, the quantity of devices which are operating in IoT is out, outnumbering human population something around seven times. So imagine that for each one of us, there is seven IoT nodes operate, operating somewhere in the world. And this is very challenging because each node has to be supplied. Each node has to be wire supplied or it has to be equipped with battery. And uh, this is really, really challenging to maintain them to, to, to really provide reliable maintenance over the energy sources. If you, if you consider wire uh, supply, you will, it is very expensive and difficult in modification. If you go to batteries, well, you have to cyclically check if they are okay or replace them. So knowing the quantity, 50 billion of places that you will have to go and change the batteries, this will, this will really give a work for entire humanity. So we would like to have those small power consumption devices, energy autonomous. So let me now go to the second part of my presentation, where I will focus our attention on wastes. Well, energy harvesting, by definition, when you go to Wikipedia, it will return you this sentence that this is energy extractions from ambient or energy or waste energy sources. And I would like to focus uh, slightly more on those waste energy sources. What are those? And those sources. Well, first, uh, cars. We we are reaching 1.5 billion of vehicles in use uh, worldwide. And as you can see, when providing 100 kilowatts of fuel in uh, energy in fuel, only 25 percent of that is transformed to mobility. Rest is the heat losses, vibrations, and other losses that occur within the car and all those losses can be recovered at least partially using energy harvesting. Another good example would be our households. So we have 25 billion meters square of useful floor in only in the European Union. And in each building there are many types of energies that are just released to atmosphere without any um, any recovery, so like liquid flows, like radio frequency, Wi-Fi or GSM, heat losses in our radiators, vibrations, indoor light and, ex uh, and the natural light, and uh, indoor air flows. So this, th those are the tar targeted energies we can partially recover uh, using uh, energy harvesting techniques. And finally, we can also consider human body as a source of useful energy. So each one of us is dissipating body heat. There are there are heat there are air uh, air flows we are breathing. There are footfalls, movements of arms, legs, and those movements, vibrations, air flows can be converted into useful electricity. Well, let's find out how we can convert those vibrations, air flows and uh, heat into useful energy. Well, to, to um, more of present you the importance of energy harvesting, how, is, how interesting this subject is, I, I have put this figure. Here you can see the interest, the scientific interest in, in the field of energy harvesting. Uh, so this is historical evolution of uh, publication quantities. This is this bar plot and you can see since 2007 the quantity of publications is rising very very fast as well as quantity of submitted patents which is here on this red line and then pandemic situation occurred the quantity of, of publications stopped because uh, there was lockdowns and some reparation plans the same for for patents because many companies were uh, closed but this trend will come back to the um, to the normal to to, to 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 will be reversed after uh covid will disappear 
So this subject is very interesting. There are many, many publications and a lot of interest in that. Here you can see the taxonomy of waste energy harvesting and only regarding the um, uh, energy harvesting techniques which are conventional. Uh, so let's have a look. Here you can see the division of waste energy harvesting techniques regarding the source media and the effect that, we, that, that is used. Um, so let, let's look on the targeted energy. When we, when we have a thermal losses, we will go for thermoelectric effect. Solar and light can be converted into electricity using photovoltaic. Kinetic energy, so vibrations, movements, it can be converted using electromagnetic, piezoelectric and electrostatic. And radio frequency also there is a way to convert for using electromagnetic. There is a huge variety of energy harvesting technique and each energy source that we are converting from requires adapted adapted technique to be used. They can they can provide DC output and AC output and they can deliver different energies at the output. So we can see that piezoelectric can produce the voltages from one millivolt to 10 volts and uh, it covers a large area of power densities as well as electromagnetic. So there is a lot of voltages that that can be delivered, that can be produced using waste and a lot of harvested power that can be recovered. How we can do it? So I will now focus in the following of my presentation about cl uh, classical energy harvesting techniques, starting with uh, rotary electromagnetic. So this is just simple generator and here you have see a rotor that rot rotates and it is uh, occupied with a coil. This coil produces a magnetic field which is marked as a blue line. This magnetic field is rotating with the rotor and it crosses the winding on the stator A, B, C and the induction Okay. Um, uh, you have, you have to, uh, no. Okay. No. No. I, I, yeah, this one. Yes. Okay. So I, I'm sh I'm sure each one of you use such a generator, even despite my my definition so is a bit too short. Well. Those are such a generators. If you ride a bike, you know what I'm talking about. And um, we, so this is very big device and it cannot be considered as an energy harvester because it does not use wastes. But there are another different, there are a few other examples. So <clears throat> here you have, you, you, can, you can see a patent. This is patent from Seiko Watch Company. Uh, and they have um, proposed a, a system of um, electromagnetic generator. You have a proof mass that is uh, rotating well while walking and you have your wrist watch uh, on. So this mass rotates and it powers the, the rotor and uh, it can be it can be 40 microwatts of uh, energy produced. So much sufficient for, um, for a watch to be operational. Another example, so here you can see small like wind turbines dedicated for um, airflow uh, recovery in the um, in the building so they can harvest even more energy like 2.5 milliwatt or 8 milliwatt so very big energy that can be harvested uh, to fabricate such a small devices as a rotary electromagnetic uh, generator is very difficult because they are coils those coils has to be really small and it's really, really challenging engineering task to be done. 
Now let's go to another uh, um, technique, which is called piezoelectric. Uh, so this, the energy, the targeted energy we will convert from, it will be vibrations or uh, mechanical shocks. So here you can see a definition of a, di a direct piezoelectric effect. So there are materials that are executing such a property that when you try to change their volume or shape, they will produce uh, electrical potential. And this is the effect we will use in energy harvesting. So the first uh, I have found uh, uh, interesting application of this effect is the military shoe. So US Army once and pretty occupied their soldiers in, in the shoes where the heel was uh, occupied with a uh, piezoelectric generator. And when the soldier was walking or running, the, the piezoelectric generator produced energy that supplied GPS localizer and all headquarters and generals could see where the soldiers actually are. The problem with this, um, with those harvesters are there, they, they provide rather small powers densities and they start to be CMOS compatible. As you will about to see, CMOS compatibility uh, is very important in energy harvesting. It allows to put the, come out from the shadow for a given technique. This, uh, since, uh, since it was uh, popularized in the military, it was also commercialized on the civil market. And here you can see the Nike shoes for runners. Uh, the same concept, there was a piezoelectric generator in the, in the hill, and it will, the, the system could calculate how fast you are running, how many uh, footfalls you produced, and what was your, your um, time, etc., etc. The, the second, uh, the, the third um, method I would like to speak of is the electrostatic. Uh, so basically, those are variable capacitors. They, the, 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 the assets or the advantage of this of this technique is that they are CMOS compatible. We can make them CMOS compatible, and they are very simple to miniaturize. You can see two two. Um, two types of them. One is with fixed potential. So the one plate of the, of the capacitor moves like that. And this type is with fixed charge. So one plate is vibrating in this direction. There are many types of uh, architectures or topologies of, the, of those harvesters like comb-like to, um, <clears throat> to increase the capacitance like slide, mm, slide capacitors, but main message from this is that there are variable capacitors. We are extracting electrical charge due to capacitance change while one plate is vibrating. And the practical realization you can see here is CMOS compatible generator uh, based on electrostatic effect. You can see two plates of, of capacitor and they are one of them is vibrating changing the capacitance of this of this uh, generator and producing up to eight microwatts. So you can see rather small powers we can harvest using this technique. Another funny example I have found in the internet is the, um, those who have problems with hearts. They are usually um, uh, equipped. Uh, they, they usually have to um, have the peacemaker. And uh, from time to time, we have to change the batteries in those peacemakers. And this is uh, a small surgery that can be burdened with complications. So the, there is a harvester. The, the, those guys uh, pro produce the electrostatic harvester that is stick to the close to the heart and it is vibrating while heart is beating, producing enough energy for peacemaker and for peacemaker to to, to be operational and no batteries is needed anymore. Well, another example is the radio frequency. So um, in the urban zone, you can see the uh, radio frequency density. So there are a lot of different um, uh, radio frequencies around us. The most popular is the Wi-Fi radio frequency and GSM. And uh, in, you can see here that those uh, waves are really carrying huge, huge energy. And the, the concept is to use this energy 
uh, to produce to power small uh, small devices. Here you can see how the energy is attenuating when while uh, being more and more distanced from uh, from the source. Uh, the problem with uh, with this uh, harvesting technique is that it works with very high uh, signals, very high frequency signals like 2.45 gigahertz or 800 megahertz. So we have to rectify this signal, and this is really really challenging to rectify efficiently this the harvested power. There are some realization here. You can see the clock that is powered entirely by the Wi-Fi. So there is no battery, only Wi-Fi waves uh, supplies the, the those uh, this clock. And there you can see those um, rectangles here. Those are antennas that are capturing the Wi-Fi waves and then rectifying rectifying to power the clock. It can be harvested up to 100 milliwatts when it it is placed six meters from the router. The most popular technique in energy harvesting is photovoltaic. I'm sure each one of you know this. So this is generation of precarriers in PN junction when illuminated. It's very popular. It is CMOS compatible. It gives CD, DC output, and this is direct conversion light to electricity. Uh, here you can see how it is popular. It is popular on the macro scale, like it is. We are using this in the national grids, and here you can see the increase of uh, installed uh, power of photovoltaic power generators in China, Germany, and other countries. So it goes up to gigawatts, and um, here you can see very interesting um, uh, figure that presents different. Um, technologies in in in, a, in a photovoltaic uh, panels, and uh, when the photovoltaic panels started to be CMOS compatible, we can see huge dump, huge reduction in price, and uh, this also improved very much, enhanced very much, popularized very much photovoltaic uh, photovoltaic generators on the market. So a few examples: the watch. And uh, this one is the code for uh, uh, bicycle, motorbike uh, riders. So you have uh, integrated flexible um, photovoltaic generators on your back that are repeating, and the code repeats the signals that the um, driver is um, is uh, doing with the car. When you are braking, the lights on your code also indicates that you are braking. And the last one, the thermoelectric, uh, I will more focus on that. So um, the, uh, why? Because we, as you know, what, from the beginning of my presentation, we are consuming huge amount of energy. There is 14,000 million tons of oil left with one of primary energy we, we needed in 2019. This is huge amount of energy, but sadly we have to admit that we are also wasting a lot of energy, at least 20 to 40 to 50% of this energy is released to atmosphere as a form of heat. So heat exhibits the highest losses among all other energies. We need to do something with that. And when, when we look on our ordinary life, we can say that we are losing a lot of heat in our households, in our cars, in our industries, and electro in electronic equipment. And all those heat lost released to atmosphere can be at least partially recovered using thermoelectric effect. Now, well, what is thermoelectric effect? Now, it was discovered 200 years ago by Thomas Johann Siebeck, and uh, this effect is also direct conversion from heat to electricity. It occurs in the material. And when you hit one end of the material, the majority carriers inside the material are migrating from the hot regions toward cold regions. And therefore, there is a thermoelectric voltage that uh, occurs um, uh, along the material. So this is the effect we will use in the harvesting. Well, historically, due to direct conversion, there are no moving parts. The, the, the it's noiseless and vibrationless, so there is no problems with fatigue. So historically, this effect was used in uh, space missions and very niche military applications. So the first time it was used in late 70s for Pioneer 10, 
satellite and uh, even now on Mars there is a curiosity and it is also powered by RTG modules or radioisotope thermoelectric generator. What is important in thermal electricity? Well, to compare different materials, because in thermal electricity materials are the most important, it's the heart of conversion. We are using so-called non-dimensional figure of merit, ZT, and it depends on thermal power, electrical and thermal conductivities. And um, those, uh, those three variables, those three parameters are interdependent. Here you can see the review of uh, materials that are used in thermal electricity and their ZT. And the message I would like to I would like to underline that those lines of ZT versus temperature are usually uh, bell shaped uh, curves like that, meaning that there is a maximum of ZT for a given temperature. Uh, and th this means that there are materials that which are the best for low mm, temperature uh, conversion, medium temperature and high temperature conversion. The second thing that you can see that those materials here are very complex, usually uh, usually built from several compounds uh, or, um, or metals, and they are incompatible with industrial technology usually. There is only one material that is used in thermal electricity, uh, which is silicon germanium, but uh, for very high temperatures. Why is it is so important for thermal electricity? Well, it is important because ZT drives or defines the efficiency of the conversion. Here you can see the efficiency versus temperature and to compare it with different uh, energy conversion techniques, you have those black points here. But the current state of the art of thermal electricity is, is here in this, in this cloud. Typically, we have very small efficiencies of thermoelectric generator around room temperature, something around 8 to 10 percent. So this makes thermal electricity so unpopular on the market. Well, is it not a good idea to increase the efficiency the, in order to increase efficiency and then make this uh, and this more popular and the thermal electricity more popular? Well, it is good, very good idea, but very difficult to realize because those three materials parameters, thermal power, electrical and thermal conductivities are interdependent and Changing one usually destroys two others. And you can see historical overview of the optimal ZT for different materials. And you can see that it took 30 years, over 30 years, to develop a material with ZT higher than one. Now we are approaching something around 2.5 in ZT, but still we are very far from, goal, from the goal to make thermal electricity popularized on the market, which is defined to be something around four. So maybe we should switch to uh, CMOS compatible materials, which are germanium, silicon or silicon germanium in order to take advantage from huge production lines and uh, take advantage from monolithical, uh, monolithical integration and cost reduction. Well, here you can see the thermal conductivity versus silicon contents and bulk silicon has thermal conductivity around 150, bulk germanium has thermal conductivity around 60, and those are the reasons why there are no uh, CMOS compatible materials uh, popularized in thermal electricity. Only between them there is silicon germanium which has, which has naturally reduced thermal conductivity. But with the development of uh, nanotechnology, uh, we are able to tune thermal, thermal transport throughout the material, and here you can see that uh, this is thermal conductivity in silicon versus silicon thickness. So the bulk thermal conductivity for massive material is something around 150. But when you reduce the thickness of silicon below one micron, you, we are observing the reduction of thermal conductivity. And this make this this effect can make um, silicon more thermal uh, more popular for thermal electricity. Additionally, we can reduce thermal conductivity in materials even more when using phononic crystals, not photonic crystals, because there were, there were many presentations before about, photo, uh, about photonic crystal, but this is called phononic crystals to block phonons. And uh, when using thin film material and uh, phononic crystals, we are able to reduce thermal conductivity in silicon 100 times. And this is the approach that can be really, really, that can 
that can really popularize thermal electricity on the market. Nanostructurization, so performing, fabricating the materials in tin films and with phononic crystals always leads to, to increase e of ZT, um, of ZT. So you can see comparison of different materials which are used in thermal electricity. And uh, th this is bulk form and nanostructure art form is, has always higher ZT than the bulk counterpart. And for CMOS compatible materials, which are silicon and germanium, the improvement is really, really high. Comparing nano silicon with bulk silicon, we have ZT increase around 180, almost 180, which is huge, huge boost. The idea to make thermal electricity more popular will be to uh, switch from conventional thermoelectric materials, which are based mainly on lead, bismuth, antimony, tellurium, which are harm harmful, toxic, and replace them with CMOS compatible materials, which are easy to get, cheap, and rather simple. But moral, most of that, most of the the biggest producers, the biggest factories are using CMOS technologies and conventional materials are not compatible with those technologies. Therefore, we cannot take advantage from huge production lines. We cannot <clears throat> monolithically integrate the, the generators with the chip and therefore the cost per kilowatt is astron astronomically high for conventional materials. But when we switch to CMOS compatible silicon or germanium, we are able to use them in those factories and then therefore we are able to reduce the cost in the final making making the thermal electricity more popular on the market so a little bit more about about topology so here you have a conventional uh, p type topology of thermoelectric generator we are using p type and n type um, semiconductors to uh, take advantage from opposite behavior of the majority carriers while exposed to temperature. So only P-type and N-type are used for to boost the voltage, the output voltage of the generator. But this topology is not very compatible with uh, industry. This is vertical topology and uh, to, to operate it in, in the industry, it is not easy. It is better maybe to switch to lateral topology like that, and this topology is, um, is more compatible with the uh, so-called SOI, te uh, CMOS technology, silicon insulator. We are using here thin film and membranes of semiconductors to get advantage from this thermal conductivity reduction I have presented before. And we are able to integrate another asset, uh, another advantage. So when all the materials used in this um, in this generator are made from thin films, we are able to integrate mechanical flexibility and this can be interesting feature. So a few examples uh, from uh, two extreme examples. So you can hear a um, small generator that can be used in uh, Internet of Things. Uh, it can produce up to 14 milliwatts when the temperature drop is 40 kelvins, uh, 30 kelvins. It comes from Germany. There is a company Micropelt, and it is based on bismuth telluride. So very small, very small generator. And here on the opposite side of the scale, you can see the thermoelectric generator that can produce 25 kilowatts, uh, and uh, it is uh, it is based on uh, uh, silicon germanium. And uh, this this generator is. The source of heat for such a generator is the exhaust gas of the engine. So my, very small powers, micro powers and really kilo kilowatts we are able to do. But in energy harvesting, we are more on focus on small energies and small powers to for IoT. So what what are the performance or what, what is the benchmark of uh, of thermal electricity? When you when you look on on a historical evolution of uh, research progress in harvested power density generators, you can see that we are something around one watt per centimeter square. So this is sufficient to power the IoT nodes. And uh, there, are, there are many companies that have commercialized many 
many generators. So you can see that here we we are something around eight eight watt per centimeter square. Also, now linking the IoT with uh, energy harvesting. So here you can see um, an, an axis with the powers and typical power for different energy harvesting techniques. So photovoltaic, electromagnetic, radio frequency, electromagnetic, uh, piezoelectric, uh, photovoltaic, thermoelectric, and rotary uh, electromagnetic. Uh, and uh, here you can see different devices. Uh, most of them can, are, can be used in IoT, but IoT range, uh, especially for sensor, is somewhere here. So you can see temperature or event control, electronic watch, pressure or temperature sensors, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and all those all those uh, devices here that are operating that are frequently used in IoT can be easily energy autonomous using one of those energy harvesting technique. So let me now summarize my presentation. So we are facing global population increase. We are urged by the fossil fuels in depletion and we are struggling with climate changes. So this requires alternative energy sources, but not on micro scale, also on, mi on micro scale, but also on macro scale. Additionally, huge, there is a huge quantity of wasted energy. So we need more, um, a, a lot of energy, but we are simultaneously wasting a lot of energy. We are observing that semiconductor industry has outstanding performance growth, but continuation of this growth, of this performance growth and development of semiconductor industry will be much easier when we will integrate energy autonomy, well, when we provide energy autonomy to the devices. And uh, uh, outstanding IoT growth, unprecedented IoT growth that was presented is slowed down by the lack of substitutions for wires and batteries. And for those reasons, we have to develop energy harvesting. And thirdly, energy harvesting can be totally supplied by um, uh, energy harvesting can totally supply various types of IoT nodes. So uh, the, their energy har harvesting can, can provide IoT nodes uh, that are energy autonomous. And when er waste energy sources are so diverse that they are requiring adapted harvesting technique like piezoelectric, thermoelectric, photovoltaic, etc., etc. And to recap with them, um, to recap the energy harvesting techniques, this this slide. So we will, I was talking about rotary electromagnetic. So the targeted energy is kinetic. This is height output power. This is complex construction is difficult in, my, in miniaturization. Piezoelectric, the targeted energy is vibrations. There are small energies and the efficiencies. It, there are few examples of CMOS compatible realizations, and the typical power is hundreds of microns, microwatts. Electromagnetic, so uh, electromagnetic waves, so radio frequency harvesting. Uh, the targeted energy is GSM Wi-Fi. It's very complex rectification. However, the, um, the construction of a harvester itself is simple. Uh, the, there is huge dependence uh, on uh, energy harvested on the distance between the source of energy and the generator. And also the harvest power is in, in the range of 100 microwatts. Photovoltaics, so the most popular, there are so uh, CMOS compatible, there are silence, noiseless, direct conversion, and the power they are covering is from microwatts to several hundred kilowatts. Electrostatic, CMOS compatible, easy to be to, to be fabricated in small, small um, dimensions. Those are variable capacitors, but the power that can be extracted are very small in the range of maximum few milli, milliwatts. And thermoelectric, so the targeted energy are the heat losses, heat gradient. There are also silent, noiseless, vibrationless. This is a reliable, very, very reliable conversion. There are small efficiencies and small energies provided. They, are, they can be fabricated in, in CMOS, but only when nanostructurized. So they, they, they need to, the, the material need to be 
done in tin films or equipped with panonic crystals. And the typical power is in hundreds of milliwatts for IoT for micro thermoelectric generators. So that's all from me. Thank you so much.